Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. I just felt like <clears throat> the Lord wanted me to add this in at the very, very beginning. And it's this, that your weakness that you struggle with in your life, that's where God usually anoints you to minister to other people. It's like God called so many people in the Bible that they were a mess. And God anointed them in the very area that they were a mess so that they could rescue people. And all of you probably have heard this before, but my whole life I was terrified to get in front of people and speak. It's like, I could lead worship all day long, but speaking, and what's the Lord do? <laughs> he anoints me in the area of my weakness. So I'm so thankful. <clears throat> you look at the Apostle Paul. He was an expert on Judaism, and he knew all about the law. And who did God call him to? The Gentiles. <laughs> because he had to rely on Holy Spirit. He called Peter to the Jews, and Peter was just a fisherman. He didn't know anything about the law, but God called him there. So that's just like the Lord, because it shows his glory. We're not capable in ourselves, but he makes us capable of what we're not capable of. Anyway, that was free. <laughs> so I'm going to speak today on the gifts of the Spirit and how God is uniquely gifted and fitted you with the gifts to your personality, to who you are. So let's uh, in 1 Corinthians 7 through 11, it lists the gifts and I'm going to read that to you. In the Passion Translation, if anybody wants to turn there, it's 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself, but all. For example, the Spirit gives one the gift of the word of wisdom to another the same gift. They're the same Spirit gives the gift of the words of revelation knowledge and to another the Spirit of the gift of faith and to another the same Spirit gives the gifts of healing and to another, the power to work miracles. To another, the same Spirit gives gifts. Oh, I already read that. Oh, and to another, the gift of prophecy. And to another, the gift to discern what the Spirit is speaking. And to another, the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. And to another, the gift of interpretations. And that's a list of the gifts of the Spirit, but it's not all of them because it, they're endless, because he's endless. So, and then I'd like to go to 2 Corinthians 10.4. In the New King James, it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. But I'd like to read this in the Passion Translation. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in the defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Many times we don't realize how powerful and what weight and authority that the gifts of the Spirit carry. In a Spirit-filled culture, the gifts of the Spirit are used all the time, and we hear about them all the time, but sometimes it's, it's more of a concept than an experience. And the Lord is making the body of Christ hungry 
to know the gifts of the Spirit, to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, because they're weapons. They're the weapons of our warfare. <clears throat> For centuries, the enemy has tried to shut the gifts down and dumb them down to just a concept. Or they went away when the original apostles died. I beg to differ. Because I've seen so many people transform through the working of the gifts of the Spirit. One of the, one of the times that I've seen the gift of prophecy work, and it was my wife. And she was very new to prophecy. But we were in Norway. And they brought us all up in front of the congregation and said, okay, pick somebody in the crowd and, and prophesy over them. And so they started down there and it got close to her and she went, Lord, help me, I don't know what I'm doing. That's probably the best thing. And she picked a lady out in the first or second row and started prophesying over that lady and telling her things. And that lady began to weep. Pretty soon she fell on the floor. It touched her so deeply. And that was my wife's first time prophesying over somebody from up on stage. So the gifts of the Spirit are powerful. You say, I'm not supernatural. I never see anything supernatural happen. Do you know that your makeup, your very makeup is supernatural? Do you know that your spirit that will live forever? That's supernatural if anything is. And by the way, the God that made the universe lives inside each one of us. If that's not supernatural, I don't know what it is. So you, every one of you, are supernatural. You're naturally supernatural. gifts of the Spirit are for every believer. Every believer. I'd like to read Ephesians 1.14. They are our inheritance in Christ. I think I'm going to have to look that one up. So in the end of verse 13, it says, Now we have been stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. He is given to us like an engagement ring is given to a bride. As the first installment of what's coming, he is our whole promise of a future inheritance, which seals us until we have all of redemption's promises and experiences complete freedom, all for the supreme glory and honor of God. Holy Spirit has been given to you and I. What a gift he is. And when you have Holy Spirit, you have the gifts of the Spirit. They go hand in hand. And so it's your inheritance and it's my inheritance to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Are the gifts for, for us? Are they to benefit us? Well, they're to benefit others. But as we benefit others, the Lord pours it out on us. So, you say, my gift is only for somebody else. Yeah, but then somebody else is ministering to you, so we're all included. It's not like God is leaving us out. But I can say from experience that the greatest experiences of my life have been ministering to other people because the Lord just pours out his spirit on me like I don't ever experience so it's it's pouring out your life for others that he wants that pleases him the gifts of the spirit I've seen some very unique gifts in people over the years. And I started thinking about this. 
the sword, the sword is a metaphor, but the sword that the, the Lord has put in our hands, it's not made for someone else. It's uniquely fashioned just for you. Because you are unique and God created you a unique way, your personality, your makeup, and he has fitted that sword exactly to fit your hand. So I'm going to tell you a story. I haven't shared this story hardly with anyone, maybe Anna Lee. But when I was, my wife and I were down at Bethel going to school, I was in the prayer house one night, and I was just having an encounter with the Lord. And I never see angels or nothing like that. But this night, I began to see this sword. It was, vi- it was vivid. I could see it, every detail of it. And this sword was blue, kind of a dark turquoise blue. And it was about five feet long, but it was, you could see right through it. I don't know what it was made of, but something from heaven. And this sword was, the Lord impressed me that this sword was made just for me. And so I picked the sword up and I, and I swung it. And when I swung it, this thing came out of the side of it and went out. 15 or 20 feet and destroyed whatever was in front of it. It's like, I've never seen a sword like that before. <laughs> and even the color, the color blue, I've, I've talked to several people that see in the spirit and they say that healing angels are blue. And so the Lord has put the gift of healing in my life and it's been glorious and I've seen so many people heal. But <clears throat> the sword is for cutting off of chains and disease off of people and deliverance for people. So that's a, that's a picture of the, the, the gift of healing in my life. So in the, in the days to, to come, maybe you should just ask the Lord, what does my gift look like in the Spirit? Because there's so many people in here that have gifts. Another thing is, I believe the Lord wants to awaken gifts in people that you didn't even know that gift was in you. But the Lord wants to awaken new experiences, new gifts in each one of us. Why? So that we can minister to people and so that we can rescue people. When the Lord puts somebody in front of you, it's because the gift that he has fitted in your hand is exactly what that person needs. Another thing that the Lord impressed upon me is when Jesus was speaking to his disciples in John 6, 63, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. The words that Jesus spoke to his disciples transformed their lives. I'd like to suggest to you that we have the same DNA that Jesus had. And that the words that we speak to people when we're ministering and encouraging are spirit and they are life. They are supernatural words that transforms people's lives. And even like Kevin, that that letter that you wrote, that lady, I'm sure there were supernatural words because they transformed lives. And we don't realize the words we speak are so powerful. They are supernatural words so many times. So when we're, when we're somewhere and God puts somebody before us, we need to remember the words that I am speaking to that person are supernatural and they will transform their life because they carry the weight of heaven. Amen. No wonder the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? He has fitted us with so many amazing gifts in our lives. And the enemy knows what we are capable of. 
when we use the gifts of the Spirit. And that's why he fights against them. But he's, a, he's fighting a losing battle. Just get your sword out. <laughs> we win, that's right, Jim. So in the last probably month and a half, the Lord's been impressing upon me that I need to be interruptible. When I get in a work mode, sometimes I just go in and I'm got my I'm focused on getting the job done. John and Kevin, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the Lord wants us to be interruptible because there's a person in front of you that that might be the only opportunity in eternity for you to speak to that person and transform their life, to tell them about Jesus or to see them healed or whatever. And that's a divine appointment that God has set up for you and that person to be transformed. So if we're not interruptible, we'll just go by and we'll miss that opportunity. But the Lord wants us to be interruptible. You look at the life of Jesus and his ministry, his very first miracle, he went to the wedding at Cana. He wasn't, he didn't go there to do anything but enjoy the wedding. And what, it, what happened? They ran out of wine and that was his first miracle. He turned the water into wine. Another one that comes to mind is Jairus' dad had come to Jesus and said, can you please come and pray for my daughter? She's deathly sick and dying. And on the way to the Jairus' house, what happened? The woman with the issue of blood snuck up behind him and touched him. And Jesus didn't rebuke her. He stopped right there and he ministered to her and healed her. So Jesus was totally interruptible. The God that made the universe stopped. Even though he was in his human body, he stopped because he cared so much. Do you realize how much God loves you? Do you really realize how much he cares? He's crazy about you. We are his delight. Out of all creation, we are his favorite. We are the ones that he sent his most precious gift to rescue. <laughs> and so those people out there that, that need a rescuer, God loves them too, and he wants you, he wants to use you to touch them. So the gifts of the Spirit, I believe, they flow around love. The love from the Father and a heart to love people. And if you have a heart to love people like he loves them, then those gifts are going to be used in a tremendous and a magnificent way to transform lives. If we become experts in, in using our gifts, it's like, I think I got this figured out. I can do this now. The only one you're going to impress is yourself. <laughs> because God wants us to lean on him. He wants... Holy Spirit wants us to ask Him, what about this person? Many times when I have gone and, and somebody asks for prayer, it's like I have no idea what that person's been through. I have no idea what, what Holy Spirit wants to speak to them. So I always stop and I ask Holy Spirit, Lord, what do you want to say to this person? I know I've shared this story more than once, but I'm going to share it again because it, it illustrates this. Um, so I went on a mission trip down to Mexico, way 200 miles south of Mexico City down there. And so we were at this church ministering, and after the service, people started, the Bethel team spread out, and people started lining up for us to pray for them. And so I prayed for a dozen people probably, and 
I love those people down there. They never just stand there. They either fall on the floor or start laughing or start shaking or something. That was so fun. But this elderly woman come up to me and her hands were like this. And she says, can you pray for me? I have arthritis and I can't hardly use my hands anymore. This was all through an interpreter. But so I went, let's pray. So I prayed for her three times. I didn't ask. I just started praying. And nothing happened. So I stopped and I went, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say? (laughs) Which I should have done to start with. And he said, speak into her identity as a daughter of the king. And so I did. I just started speaking into her identity. And I don't know what I said, but she just broke and started weeping. She was just so touched by the Lord. And so we carried on there for a little while. And and so I asked her, I says, how is your hands? And she looks down at her hands and they're like this. So... Holy Spirit knows the secret to every heart. He knows the key to every person. He knows their makeup, and He knows what's going to touch them. So the number one key in operating in the gifts of the Spirit is relying on Holy Spirit. I bet I've said 20 times, but I'm going to say it again. Holy Spirit is a genius. He knows everything. And he wants to help us. He has the wisdom to know how to 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 touch people when we don't. So how can we be tuned in to Holy Spirit and hear his voice sometimes when we're just out? Or when we're standing in front of someone ministering to them. It's like many times he just comes and you hear his voice. But sometimes it takes a conscious effort to stop and go. Out throughout my day, I want to be conscious of you, Holy Spirit. Because I know you're here and I know your heart. And I know that you want to touch somebody through me today. So... I think the key is to stop and to be conscious of His presence. It's called focusing. And what we focus on becomes our reality. If you focus on negative things all the time, what's your reality going to be? Hopelessness. Yeah. But if we focus on Holy Spirit and, and we're conscious of His presence and we're conscious of His voice, It's so much easier to hear his voice because we're focused and we know his voice. One other thing the Lord's been speaking to me about is becoming childlike. What's the opposite of an expert? Childlike. Sometimes I sense in in our worship services that the Lord just wants to uh, play with us, like dance with us in our celebration. It's like when Elizabeth Reisinger was here, many of you, most of you know who she is. Every time she prayed for somebody, she looked for an opportunity for a child or just to be childlike. I believe the Lord loves that that we're childlike and that we're so fixed on him as a child would be on their parents that we're we're so taken by him that that we can hear his voice and that we can we can operate from that place of being childlike a child a child is not an expert but boy are they powerful children i've looked at children so much different for the last several years because I've seen what, how the Lord uses them. At Bethel, we, my wife and I both served in the healing rooms for several years. And the most requested team in all the healing rooms was the children. 
there's this little boy from Switzerland, and they'd stand him up on a chair. He was a little redhead. And he'd go, bam, just like that. And a guy was healed of cancer. Like, So being childlike, depending upon Holy Spirit, not having it all figured out, not being an expert, I believe that pleases God so much that we're dependent upon him for everything. What else do we have here? (laughs) God will send you into places you don't feel qualified. But God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. So if you don't feel qualified, that's what qualifies you. (laughs) (laughs) God loves to use people that are the unlikely candidate. And that's that's us, right? Many times that's us. I believe the wisest people on the planet are not the ones that have uh, 150 IQ. I believe it's the people who know Holy Spirit. Who ask him, what do you think, Holy Spirit? because you would be shocked at what he might come up with. I believe there are so many, even inventions and and ways to do things in the world that the Lord is going to start downloading to the body of Christ just to show his glory, to show the the heavenly wisdom that comes from him. So are the gifts of the Spirit, does the Lord give those to us because we're we're awesome and we deserve these gifts in our lives? No. He gives them to us because He wants us to have His heart. And like a child, to use those gifts with Holy Spirit leading the way. So lastly, The gift of praying in your heavenly language is so important and being filled with the Spirit. And I'm not downing anyone that hasn't been filled with the Spirit, but if you haven't, that's one of the things you should hunger for most in your life. When we pray in the Spirit, Holy Spirit is praying through us and He's saying things that we have no idea what He's saying, but He's praying the perfect will of the Father. And he's releasing. Yeah, he's releasing what God wants to do. And so when we're praying in tongues, we're saying, Holy Spirit, you pray through me and your will be done. And his will is being released as we pray in the Spirit. So it's huge. So in review, I'd like to just go over the list. The gifts of the Spirit are for every believer. Amen? Amen. That means you. (laughs) The gifts carry great power and authority. Way more than we've been led to believe. Yeah. Do you realize that you're a mighty warrior? That God has chosen you to show his glory in the earth. And that means you, glory man. Paul, I call him glory man. You are naturally supernatural. Your very makeup is supernatural. The gifts of the Spirit are uniquely fitted to you and I. Your gift And my gift may look somewhat different. It's because the Lord has fitted it perfectly to you. We need to be interruptible. When Holy Spirit puts someone before us and we're busy, we need to just stop. Because that moment in eternity might be the only opportunity for that person to receive Jesus. 
We need to be childlike. And I've already said this, but I'll say it one more time because I just love it. Holy Spirit is the genius of geniuses. He knows everything about everything. That's the most amazing statement. And what a gift he is to us. When we're feeling down, he will comfort us. When we need to know which way to go, he will show us. When we need gifts to minister to people, he will give them to us. He's everything. And he's not a... Many people refer to Holy Spirit as it. He's not an it. He's the third person of the Trinity. And he is so amazing. He will make you capable of things that you are far incapable of. That's who is inside of each one of you. I would like to just leave you with this. Lord, how can I love someone with the gifts that you've put in my life today? How can I see somebody's life transformed because of what you have put inside of me? Those gifts. Before I close, I just, I have a sense that there might be somebody here that you've been just feeling out of sorts, like you just don't feel like yourself. You just feel like, why should I go on? There's, there's, I just need a reason to live. And if that's you, I'd just like you to, this will take bold, boldness, but I'd just like you to raise your hand if there's anybody here like that. Yeah, can some people gather around our sister there? Thank you, Lord. And let the gifts of the Spirit put them into action right now. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Ah. It's been a privilege. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.